I've improved my game over the past year by making small adjustments to my technique, enhancing the way I see the shots, and by adopting simpler strategies that make playing snooker more straightforward. What I discovered was a little bit unusual, but it helps you play more accurately and more consistently, so I'm going to show you both how it works and what you need to do. I've learned this new information finding errors in my technique that I didn't realise were there, just like this one. Sometimes when I start playing, everything goes exactly where I'm aiming, but more often I'm out by a fraction, and this can alternate between the left and the right side of the pocket. Now I've explained in the past how you can easily fix this by moving your stance. But this year I came across something new that allows you to be even more accurate. 1. Standing closer Generally speaking, if you miss a shot to the left hand side, then you're standing too far to the left. And if you stand a little bit too far to the right hand side, then shots are going to go to the right. But I knew I was standing in exactly the same place every single time, and here's why. I was positioning the edge of the heel of my shoe precisely on the line of the shot, which kept my cue perfectly in line every single time. Except when it didn't. The problem was my other foot. Because I'm right handed this is my left foot and the more I move it forward the more I rotate around clockwise and this encourages me to play shots further to the left hand side. And because I wasn't keeping this foot in the same position I was struggling to be consistent. I'm still not getting this right every single time so if I'm continually missing shots to the left hand side then I'm pulling my foot back a little bit and if I'm continually missing shots to the right hand side then I'm pushing it forward a little bit. Now if you're left handed this is going to be confusingly the other way round but the good thing about this is very quickly you work out where to put your foot and you start playing the shots a lot straighter. But I was having another problem that was causing me similar issues. 2. Body Angle A few months ago I was struggling to win a frame until all of a sudden I found a really nice pot in the middle pocket and all of a sudden the ball started doing exactly what I wanted it to and I very quickly won the frame. And weirdly the reason for this was because of how much I was leaning. On the shot it's actually pretty easy for your body to rotate around in this direction or even to lean over back in this direction but there's only one position where you're going to be able to pot confidently and that's mostly because it has an effect on your cue arm. If you allow your body to twist on the shot then your cue arm usually comes with it so if I rotate around in this direction I'm going to start cueing around my body at an angle which is a problem I was having in the last video when I was trying to recreate a Judd Trump shot and I kept throwing my elbow at it. So what I've been trying to do is rotate my body around just enough in this direction so my arm stays straight and it's impossible for my elbow to tuck into my body and me to pull my cue around my body and miss the shot. So here's how it works. To avoid pulling the cue around your body and striking the white at an angle, make sure your body's in the right position to get your cue arm straight or just this side of vertical. You don't want it tucking into your body and causing you to cue across the ball. Surprisingly, considering this was quite awkward, I have been able to keep it the same on most shots, which has been really helpful because I've been really struggling with cueing across the ball because I've been pulling it around my body, and this has completely stopped that. Something else I was having trouble with was moving on the shot. 3. Removing movement It seemed until recently the harder I tried to stay still at the table, the more I ended up jumping up in the air. Surprised that went in actually. Now I've explained this a lot recently so I'm only going to say this quickly but what really helped me is I clamped my elbow down onto the table and just made sure I kept that and my bridge hand completely still and the rest of my body could rock around a little bit but it didn't really change my position and I couldn't really move too much. So here's how it works, push your elbow into the table and focus on keeping this and your bridge hand completely still. This almost completely prevents the rest of your body from moving side to side. Now this is almost certainly the simplest thing I've improved this year, but it's also the most successful. It stopped me jumping around like Alex Higgins without the talent, and it's improved my game more than anything else in this video, with the possible exception of this next thing. 4. Break Building 
Changing my focus during a break has really improved my scoring. In the past I would have been annoyed if I'd missed a potable black like this one, but now I have a different attitude to it. And that's because I was worried about potting the ball and just hoping I'd make it to the next shot. Rather than getting annoyed about missing a relatively straightforward black, my concern is about the previous shot and why I didn't play a straightforward shot hard enough in the first place because even if I left the cue ball there somewhere there's definitely no way I'd have missed the black but if we go back even further if I just run through far enough off the black in the first place to somewhere about there then I'd have the right angle on the red to get out for the black without having to play a difficult shot so I now focus a lot harder especially on the more straightforward shots about keeping in good position so I can go as long as possible without having to play a missable shot and my focus is split between that and making the right decisions. Here, for example, I could just easily play up for the black, but it makes it difficult to get onto the next red. So instead, I can play back across the table on this side, and this gives me a much easier shot to get back on the next red. It takes a long time to learn all of this stuff and work out how well you can play and what shots you should be playing. But once you do, the game becomes a lot easier. So here's how it works. Play positional shots confidently and focus harder on getting the simpler shots right, which will increase the amount of straightforward shots you have to play. And that's vital because the greatest threat to you missing a pot is not finishing in good enough position on the next ball. I often find break building while understanding your ability is a lot like doing a jigsaw puzzle. You have to know how to move the pieces into the right position. So the challenge is to move the cue ball around the table to only leave you shots that are well inside your ability. Five, timing. This has almost certainly been the biggest unsolved problem of the year for me, where I keep striking the cue ball too quickly before I'm ready. What this means is I start trying to push the cue through the minute I've pulled it back, or possibly even before I've pulled it back far enough. It keeps happening under pressure and I need to do something about it soon before it starts costing me even more games. So here's the plan. To start off with, I want to build more of a rhythm during the shot, so I'm confident taking time at the table, and I don't feel the need to rush anything. So here's how it works. If you strike the cue ball too impatiently, you'll almost certainly cause your cue to jump and miss hit the shot. The ways around this are to pause at the end of your backswing or build up a rhythm as you play the shot so you definitely pull the cue back as far as you intend to before striking it. Either way you do this, it needs a lot of consistent practice and repetition to help you build up confidence. Which is kind of like what the next part is all about. And we're looking at that right after we find Brandon, who's from Harrogate in the UK. There. Six, confidence. Even though they haven't all worked perfectly, the improvements I have made to my game have meant that I no longer miss straightforward shots too often. And together with the way I'm thinking about break building, this has resulted in me scoring a lot more points when I get a chance. So I need to start playing the game in a more confident way. And this involves getting two different things right. The first of these is to go into a pack of reds early, because in the past I've been playing the shots around the pack because I didn't have the ability to score enough points. Whereas now I do, and being negative is causing me to lose games because I'm not scoring enough points from a chance. This is also going to change the way I play safe, because in the past I was playing off the reds as thick as possible, so when I got a chance I was able to pop more. But this is leaving my opponent the chance first, so it means I'm losing out every now and again. So instead what I'm going to be doing is playing thin safety shots and then opening up the reds in the break. So in summary, I've improved this year by making sure I'm leaning at the right angle, keeping my bridge arm absolutely still, and break building in a simplified way. But I'm looking to improve yet further by avoiding snatching at the shots, keeping my foot in a more consistent position, and attacking the game in a more confident way. But I'm sure I'll be doing these things better by the start of the next season. So here's how it works. This one's just for me really, but I think I can have more success going into the reds earlier on in a break. But it can be incredibly helpful to plan how aggressively you want to attack the table in certain situations. And if you want more help doing that, you can always try the rocket method. 
I look forward to teaching you everything I know in my ultimate snooker course. And don't forget to use the promo code BREAK to get Ronnie's coaching at a discounted price. But if you want to improve your snooker even more right now in a way that doesn't directly relate to my game, then have a look at these two videos. And remember, don't just watch play and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel and visit the website. See you later.